Hey guys, this is John. Welcome back to the channel. And today we're going to talk about, uh, what else? Bicycles, vintage bicycles. Now back in the late 60s and early 70s, so many great bikes were being imported into the country. You know, from Italy, from uh, France, from England. Uh, we had Chinelli's, we had Colnago's, we had, you know, all these cool bikes. But there's really nothing made in the States. Now being from Chicago, of course, we had the Schwinn Paramounts. Those were beautiful bikes, but no, they weren't custom and you were very limited. And around that time, there's a gentleman named Albert Eisentraub. Now, some consider him the grandfather of the American bicycle building movement. I don't know if that's true or not. You can decide. But many other builders uh, came around. Some were world renowned, some were national, and you know, some were just regional. And there's several great builders out there. And they're still building today. Now, a couple years back, I was looking uh, to get a bicycle repainted. This Raleigh Competition GS and uh, a name came to mind. His name was Jeffrey Bach. And I remember working on his bikes back in the 80s when I ran a shop. He was not only known for building high quality, beautiful bicycles, he also did excellent restoration work in old steel frames. So when I learned he was still building bicycles, I took off, went to Ames, Iowa with my Raleigh in the car. Now while I was there, Jeffrey uh, was building a bicycle for a gentleman named Brian, who you're going to meet a little bit later in this video. And this bike was gorgeous. And then he had a second one built, and he brought it to the Auburn Corps Museum for their uh, Classic Bicycles Auburn show that just took place in June. So I got together with uh, him and, uh, and Brian, and we talked about his bicycle. And uh, this thing's gorgeous. Take a look. Now please excuse the noise. Behind us, they're arranging the tables and chairs for the next event. Well, it is a beautiful bike, and I have the owner of that bicycle right here. His name is Brian. How you doing, Brian? Good. Th this bike is nuts. Uh, what was your inspiration behind it? Well, uh, the bike started as a, a discussion that Jeff and I had years ago about the fact that there was no real true uh, equipment group or parts group for a randonneur or a touring bike, and how the focus was all on racing components. And so we were discussing, well, how would we do something and what's the closest we could get? We started out with uh, the discussion on the French bike, but then it, as it turned out, the, the, the first bike that we did was the Italian bike that you uh, highlighted, uh, I think, last year. Yes, yeah, actually, I'll link to that below. The first bike I saw him build for you, uh, I actually did a video on it, and I'll link down below. If you're going to do a, a randonneur bike, yeah, the Italian bike was wonderful. I didn't think we could outdo that, but I think this one kind of has outdone it. But you can't do a randonneur bike unless you're doing a French one. So that's why we're, we're here with the French bike today. Oh, it's gorgeous. You definitely had a vision. What caused you to choose Jeff to build this bike? Well, the, the story that I have with Jeff is that uh, we both grew up in the same small uh, farm town in Iowa. And uh, he's a few years older than me, but as a boy, I'm riding my BMX bike with my friends down the street, and uh, one of the garage doors is open on the house, and it turns out that that's Jeff's parents' house, mm -hmm. and uh, in the garage was his mom's bike. And even at my young age, I could tell quality. And uh, we admired that bike for some time. Later on, I went to college at Iowa State, and Jeff had his shop there at Iowa State. I was working at Michael Cyclery and Jeff had his shop right across the street and so uh, I would spend time over there. You call it an apprenticeship but I did a lot of sweeping the floors and uh, just running errands for Jeff and maybe doing some sandblasting for him and uh, by the time I uh, matured and uh, really found an interest in randoneering and I, um, a randoneer bike I think is benefited from uh, being built by a custom builder instead of something off the rack. It's really right, hard to find an right. off the rack randonneer. And really the only person I could think to do it was Jeff. Now did you choose the geometry or did uh, Jeff suggest angles, lengths, etc.? So a lot of this build I think Jeff and I collaborated on, but I would say that there were three collaborators on this build uh, as far as the geometry goes. One was I think Renee Hearst had done a lot of work on that, so I took inspiration from uh, Hearst's builds, which are had, were pretty dialed in as far as the geometry goes. And then uh, I, I kind of shared with Jeff with my views on and with my size, um, what would be uh, some good measurements for the tubes, 
And then I think Jeff is kind of fine-tuned to what he thinks uh, really works for a bike that's comfortable. And that's what you need in a Rand in your bike. You need a bike that's comfortable. So, so uh, Jeff, did you have any disagreements or any uh, back and forth in terms of angles, lengths, etc.? No. Well, n n not in terms of angles and lengths. Um, he did have the veto on that because um, he's so knowledgeable on this. When, whenever I would suggest something and he had a better idea, we would always go with his idea on, as far as the goes. So gotcha. he had an idea for the chainstay length or head tube, uh, seat tube, uh, top tube length, wow. rake. Yeah. Well, yeah, but, well, okay, once again, you know, the Ron and Orange geometry, we lean pretty heavily on, you know, the traditional Rene Hearst's stuff because it's, stood, it's pretty much stood the test of time. And in terms of, like, the top tube length, seat tube angle, and things like that, you know, we're looking at, you know, you know Brian's geometry, I guess, whatever, and looks at what works for him on other bikes. The bike is beautiful. Tell me about your component choices. Well, the theme that we are going for on, on these builds is a 30-speed index drivetrain with cantilever brakes. And the reason we chose cantilever brakes, I mean, you have a couple of options for your, your brake calipers, but cantilever really gives you a lot of room for a, an oversized tire and a fender. So those were the two main pieces that we were looking at as far as componentry go. Tell me about the brakes here. Let's so show what we got here. These are Mavic driver brakes, which are from 1948, and they've been restored. The accompanying brake levers are from 1948, and they're called open back brake levers. Uh, we have a Rene Hurst triple crank set with pins for shifting. There's an Ultegra chain and cassette, 10 speed, uh, 1230, uh, 10 speed cassette with a Dura 7800 long cage derailleur and a Hure Jubilee front derailleur just to kind of that is sharp. fulfill that, that French inspired design. The down tube shifters are also Dura's. They're uh, a 7900 series, 10 speed indexed. I, you know, I'm ignorant. I didn't even know that they had a down tube 10 speed shifter. Yeah, they're they're fairly rare. You find them mostly in Japan, but uh, every so often you can you can find them. And now, tell me about this stem. This thing is totally unique. So again, this is a reproduction of the original Rene Hurst stem. This is a modern one that they're selling now out of uh, Seattle, and it has a, a clamp on the rear side for it, which is a little bit unique. But on top, you also see that there's a uh, it's the Rene Hurst uh, switch for the headlight, which is pretty neat. Oh, you're killed. so that turns on and off the light. Yes. Oh, that's so sharp. Now, what is the electrical system on this thing? How many bikes have one? It's a retro style bike, but it's totally modern in terms of the front hub and such. So, Je so Jeff, would Jeff, you share on that? Well, it's a Schmidt, you know, Schmidt Son S-O-N S-L hub, and it gets its contact uh, there's a stainless steel contact plate on the inside of the dropout, and there's an insulation plate behind that to protect it from the rest of it. And there's a wire that comes through the fork blade, through the inside of the fork blade, that is soldered to that contact plate. So when that wheel is done, the contact is made, the ground is on the other side, and so that, you know, that completes your circuit. And so then that is connected to the switch and to the headlight, and... Um, it's also there's wires run through the frame, through the fender bead uh, that will run, will run the tail light. Wow, that's sharp. Another interesting piece is on the headlight. This is a sine wave uh, Beacon 2 headlight. Uh, and in addition to it being really bright LED, it also can, uh, it has a USB port on it and it can charge a phone or a Garmin or something like that. You know, I could imagine uh, how useful that would have been on Ragbri this year, last year, because yeah, my phone would go, and I don't have that extra little uh, charger with me, the extra battery. Here. Now, th this taillight is totally unique. Tell me about that. Well, that's a Sube taillight. It's a vintage French, uh, new old stock from the 1970s. It's been rewired by uh, a friend of ours, Anton, in Boston, so that it runs uh, on an LED bulb. Wow, that's sharp. All right, you have it. Is it IDL or IDL? How do you pronounce that? You know? Uh, 
it, I, I pronounce it uh, Ideal. Ideal? Okay. Well, it's a new old stock uh, Ideal Model 92 uh, from the 19, early 1970s. And it's the model that they refer to as the Diagonal, which is made specifically for randonneering. It has a little bit wider, what's called a crescent on the, or a croissant on the back. And uh, it's designed so that you can do endurance riding with that type of saddle. Gotcha. This thing is gorgeous. It even looks nice. And actually, that's the whole thing about this bike that I'm really impressed with. Because obviously, you have, you have function. But the form, it's beautiful, the artwork on it. Um, what inspired all the artwork, the, the pinstriping and such? Sure. So the paint, um, we can go back to the, the Italian uh, bike, which had uh, a tricolored paint for the Italian colors, of green, white, and red. This is similar for the French-inspired bike, which is the blue, white, and red for their national colors. Then um, uh, we have a wonderful paint pinstriper, master pinstriper named John Parker. Uh, kind of gave him uh, some liberties to kind of take it where he wanted to. Well, for instance, and I don't know if you can capture this on a camera or not, but there is a there is some cyan like this turquoisey blue highlights here and there that almost disappear in some lights and then other lights they will just pop and that was his that was entirely his idea that is sharp it's beautiful in the center of the fenders there's a double blue line there's a double there's a double line of that on the fenders and it and depending on the light it pops in and out of out of sight it does actually that's pretty cool wow and that was all his idea and, uh, and I, I think he's like, oh my god it's gorgeous there's some, there's some, you know, another one of those dots there, and there's just some blue. There's a blue line down the center of the fork. Wow. Blade. There's more going on here than meets the eye. You really have to take your time. And look at the colors here. Yeah. Well, and this was a stock color, but then I modified it with some uh, some white dry pearl. To then that increases the color sure. Sure. So. Absolutely. All right, guys, I don't know what the seat post is. I have no idea. Tell me about that if you can. Well, okay, we wanted as many French components on the bike as possible. And, um, you know, uh, one of the most famous French seat posts or seat pillars was the simplex. But simplex seat posts tend to be way too short for Brian. So we need something longer. And so I suggested, well, we need to get the genuine French you know, La Prade seat post or La Prade. You know, my French is that good. <laughs> and Bryce said, Well, I'd never seen or heard of one of these. And I said, Well, or I built a bike for a guy back in, I don't know, ancient history. Um, and it was all French components, and we had one on his bike. So I know they exist. So you had to dig that up? I did, but it was 20, so this is a 27 2. Yeah, it's 27.2 inner diameter on the right, seat tube, but it's a 27.4 seat post. Oh. So I had to figure out a way to kind of check take. it up in the lathe and take the bottom part. So you down turned it just a little bit. All just right. A little bit. Oh, did not come with a red flutes in the highlight. Gotcha. Or, yeah, so you did yeah, that. You yeah, painted yeah, that in there. Yeah. So we painted that in. Take the red here on the crank. Also, that's something you got. You did as well. And you know, I kind of made that thing here and down here on the Hanjo on the fender. Crazy. And that's just all part of you part of the attention to detail that you come to expect on a Rondo bike. Right. Well, I like to say you're riding a Picasso, but you're riding a Bach. Uh, now, what's the riding experience like on this thing? Well, we, you and I went for a, we went for a group ride here yes. this morning, and I have to tell you, it's like being on a cloud. That, the, the theme for randoneering is endurance, and you have to be comfortable. So the design of this gives you the comfort you need to ride for long distances, 100 miles, 200 miles, or, or even longer. Sure. And what tire are you riding? So those are Rene Hurst uh, 700C by 38. 38s. Okay, cool. And I'm running uh, 55 PSI in front hand. Rear. You're running 55? Yeah. Wow. See, I'm old school. I, I just, I have to get used well, to that. Well, you really run your tires, and so you need to run higher pressure. Well, this thing is gorgeous. I really appreciate you both taking the time to show it to me. 
Uh, and I hope uh, the, the people viewing this really uh, learned something, and uh, I'm glad they got to see it. So thanks so much for your time. Yeah, it's good to see you here in Auburn, John. Uh, it was a great time. I'm so glad you spent it with me. Jeff, work of art as usual. Well, and, thank you. Uh, ultimately, Brian won an award for uh, that bicycle at the show, and he accepted it gladly with uh, Jeffrey Bach by his side. It was a beautiful bike. Way to go. It was a real pleasure getting to know Jeffrey over the last couple of years. I ended up bringing him a frame to get redone. You're going to see that coming up in the channel. It's a Marinoni built AMF bike. Uh, it was a team bike, supposedly written by Mark Gorski, and we're going to confirm that, but it's going to turn out wonderful. I can't wait to see it when it's done. Hey guys, thanks so much for sticking with me. It was a great event and also uh, great hanging out with Jeffrey and Brian and learning about that bike. Now, uh, the Auburn Court Museum, there was an awesome event, and there's another one coming up uh, very soon, actually, in August. And uh, here, check this out. The event is called Venerable Velos. It's a vintage, lightweight bicycle show. It's Sunday, August 11th of this year at Lions Oak Park in Wixom, Michigan. Now, for more information and to pre-register, email them at venerablevelosshow at gmail.com. Now, coming up on the channel, there's going to be some unique stuff. Uh, first of all, we're going to do a video of what I need to do to prepare to do the, um, the Ohio and Erie Trail. Yeah, I'm going to blog a ride. Hopefully, you guys check that out with me. I'm, I'm not really much of a blogger, but we're going to go from Cincinnati to Cleveland in five days, about 70 miles a day. Should be a great trip. And uh, we're going to credit card it. We're going to be carrying a lot of gear but uh, I'm not going to be sleeping in a tent. So, hey, join me for that. I'll also be doing YouTube uh, shorts every day telling you where I'm going to be the next day. So if you want to you know, go, uh, ride along, it would be kind of fun to run into, some, run into some of the people that watch this channel. And what bike am I going to take on this ride across Ohio? This is my 1980 Jack Taylor Tourist. Uh, it's all decked out. Pretty much ready to go. I got a handlebar bag coming for it. I'm real excited about that trip. And if you're going to do it, might as well do it on a 45 year old bike. Also, coming up, I know I keep talking about it, but we got the Volari rebuild. We're going to take that bike and build it from top to bottom. It's not in bad shape. It doesn't need restoration. It needs just a good cleaning and a once over. And uh, I'm going to show every single step on it. It's going to be a long video. Probably, you'll probably fast forward through some of it. I'll try to make it a nice, relaxing, uh, put you to sleep kind of video. That's, that's what people like. So we'll be doing that. So thanks so much for watching. Please hit the like button. Uh, comment on this video too. Uh, it really makes a difference for some reason in the algorithms. Uh, I don't know if you're aware, but I could post a video and in one day I'll get 1,500 views. Now, if I get one with lots of comments and a lot of likes, I get 5,000 in a day. It just depends if the algorithm picks it up. And you guys are in charge of whether or not the algorithm picks it up. So like, subscribe, uh, do all the comments, all that great stuff. It helps the channel. I don't monetize this channel at all either. It's not about the money. It's about building a community that loves these bicycles and uh, that sort of thing. So um, hope to see you soon. Thanks so much for watching. We'll catch you next video.